my little one has a friendship tea around Valentine's Day. And it started when she was three years old. And I wanted to share with you how I prepare a party, uh, some ideas that might be helpful. Now, if you actually wanted to see the party and how much fun we had, then check our Sweet Cake Family channel and I'll try to post the link in the description box so you can have um, a quick access to it. But this video is all about how you come up with a friendship tea party for Valentine's Day. Now the first thing for us is to choose the friends, to choose the guests. And for us that's very difficult because my little one has lots of sweet friends that we care about. And we don't want to hurt anybody's feeling by excluding them or by not inviting them. But I have found out that when you want to have a friendship tea, if you have too many girls, what ends up happening is that the group splits in two or three groups and the whole purpose of the tea is no. So choosing the friends is very important. Uh, not only so my little one has a great time, but the other guests. I try to um, see which groups of girls already play well together. In total, I like to have between four and five, maybe six girls the most. And that makes it a little bit hard because we love so many of her friends. But there are other ways of letting them know they appreciate them by having a play date just the two of them or like what we did, we hugged some of our very special friends and what we mean hug, uh, we surprised them with a gift for Valentine's Day. But it's always going to be difficult when you want to have a small group of people to any event. And um, that's for us the most difficult thing. The other thing I find very helpful is to choose a theme. I'm a very indecisive person, so I really need to focus into one thing. Otherwise, I go to Michael's or a Hobby Lobby and I see different things that are cute. I go, oh, I can use this and that. And then at the end, you have too many things. You spend so much money. So I choose a theme. This year, uh, we chose Candyland. And candies and Valentine's, they work together so well. For a tea, you will need teacups. Don't buy new teacups. I believe that teacups and books need to be rescued. Check your consignment stores, check your thrift stores, go to antique uh, shops, borrow some. I have a healthy um, collection of teacups because I always love tea and teapots. So if I go to a place and I see a teacup that is in a great shape, a good price, I rescue them. And that's how I started my collection. And I believe teacups need to be used. If they break, they break. But this is a process, not only for my little one to enjoy her friends, but to learn, to learn manners, to learn to organize an event, to be a good hostess, and so many things that she needs to learn as she's growing up. So this is a great opportunity to teach your little one. And not only girls, boys need to know how to behave in a social, situation, how to have good manners on the tables. Sometimes when I have a party, the girls can be rowdy, but the boys, they come, they eat, and they're out. And they don't enjoy a sit-down meal. So as parents, we need to teach them how to sit down, enjoy, relax, be there in the moment. I like to use things that I already have. I have a lot of things that will go for a Candyland theme that I didn't have to make from scratch. Now, if it's a new event where I have 40 people, 50 people, I do tend to spend a little bit more and to be more creative and to go crazy. Uh, but for an event like this, I use what I already have and I make one or two new things and I buy one or two new things. That way it's not overwhelming on myself and on my wallet. So the next thing is an invitation. Um, technology is amazing. You can invite your friends, sending them an email, invite, texting, but I think my little one is growing up where she's not seeing the finest 
traditions and customs we had before the internet era, which is receiving a letter, an actual letter, or an actual invitation on the mail. Yes, Evite saves you money and time and, po and postage, but imagine when the little one goes to the mail and there is actually a letter for her, an invitation for them. And the invitation sets the mood for your party. Already it sets an expectation of what's going to come. And in there you can be very specific of what you're planning to do. I did not find a tea uh, invitation, but what I did find is in uh, the store Tuesday mornings, this beautiful package of yourself birthday cards. I just left that birthday uh, cutouts out I printed some of my own um, uh, cupcakes and cakes and you can even buy stickers and because I didn't want to write it four times, <laughs> the specifics of the date, the times, um, I just printed in a, my computer a little extra note and glued it, put a little embellishment and they were ready to go and my little one helped putting the stamps, the whole process, again, I'm teaching her. The next thing is activities and games. How are you going to have your little ones entertained? I'm not one of those parents that plans an activity for each second of the party. Now, I understand if you have 10, 5 years old that you may want to do that because otherwise your house will be totally destroyed. But these girls are a little bit older already and the purpose of a friendship tea is to, for them to develop a friendship. How can they do that if they don't actually talk and share things? So I plan one or two activities for this kind of events. Now, if I had a bigger group of kids, yes, I would like to have them entertained. But for this party, I used something that I already had. I had a life-size uh, game board that I had made for a challenge game. So what I did is I just turned that board around and reused it to make my Candyland board game. The end of the game, instead of a candy castle, I already had made for another project a rainbow and that's another video that I'll try to see if I can put the link in the description box is a do-it-yourself pool noodle rainbow so cheap I think it was like five to seven dollars because I got the pool noodles at the end of the season then I made some lollipops simple to make and some uh, candies from pool noodles and uh, balloons. Don't underestimate the power of a good balloon, even if the girls are older. Even adults like balloons. And that was it. So I used what I already had. And if you want to see how I did any of these projects, if it's not already made into a video, please comment uh, that you would like some help and I will make a video for you. At the end also, we had the punch box where I had little gifts for each girl to open. That was like their favorite. And kids love punch boxes. Uh, there is a, a craze about opening something that they can see. So I already have that, I used it. Again, recycle what you have. Food and drinks. Kids have to eat and kids have to drink and they're gonna do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a tea party. However, I don't think little ones will appreciate a formal sandwich like salmon uh, or cucumbers with um, shrimp. So I did want to have a little bit of something nicer for them to eat than just maybe pizza. But what I did is I made grilled cheese and I cut them in the shape of hearts. I made the everybody loves macaroni and cheese. I just used very nice cups to put the macaroni and cheese into. And then instead of cupcakes, which kids love, I saw in a Hobby Lobby flyer this great idea, which is a waffle cone dipped in, uh, they had it dipped in yogurt. I dipped it in white chocolate with fresh fruit. And I also had extra vanilla yogurt 
and it looks so pretty. And I did also make uh, chocolate covered marshmallows and I bought the lollipop sticks and they were ready to go. Uh, veggies, I like to have veggies because they will eat it if you cut them. If they have carrots and cucumbers and cherry tomatoes, they will eat it. And then candies, because it's a candy land theme. You also need to provide, besides the hot tea, that was a fruit tea. Uh, one year I made regular tea and one of the girls drank five cups of them, so she couldn't go to sleep for a long time. Um, so I made a fruit tea this time, but there are some little girls that still hot tea for them is something new. So if I don't make cold tea, iced tea, I have a punch and make it pretty. Just had cute uh, ice cubes instead of ice cube. I made ice hearts and I put fruits in them. That's the food. I didn't go into anything crazy because I know that the little ones might not appreciate um, savory sandwiches that adults we might enjoy more or scones that are a little bit on the drier side. And finally, the decorations. The table is your centerpiece. That's where the guests are going to spend the most time. At least the girls are going to spend some time sitting at the table. And I found these pretty plates at Hobby Lobby. That's the only thing I bought new. I used a tablecloth made uh, out of fabric and I also used fabric napkins. Uh, instead of paper plates and instead of uh, paper napkins. Now, I had wonderful times eating out of a paper plate, drinking out of a soda can, but I want to teach my girl how to have a, how to set a table and how to have manners if she has to go on an event where it's formal. Or one day she may have a job where she will have to organize a party, an event, and I want her to feel comfortable. And let me tell you what happened. Those girls were at the table for over half an hour. I was surprised. I thought they were gonna eat and run and play. They were talking, they were sharing, they were enjoying the food. I was surprised to the point that I was looking at the clock and I go, okay, we need to get on with the activities. And I had to tell them who wants to go and start our game of Candyland. They were talking and having the best time. So that table is crucial for a tea party. I like fresh flowers. I like um, silk flowers are, are nice, but for a um, tea, choose fresh flowers. They're going to be sitting there for a, at least half an hour. And I like to use the teacups and the plates and the little teaspoons. And one of the things that is always a hit in a tea party are the sugar cubes. They love it. It's nice to show them how to have a sit down time. We can't do this every day, of course, but teach them to sit down, relax, slow down, and enjoy the meal, not just gulp it down.